correct me. She still can. She still does, Louise. Trust me, she still does. It's like they always say, you don't know what goes on behind closed doors. Amen. But I do. I love my wife so much. We've been together for 51 years. Amen. And, uh, sometimes but I am going to be sharing some things for the women of this church and for all our first-time visitors do we have any first-time visitors I didn't see well you guys are going to be in for a treat <laughs> amen because for the most part every person that's in this place up here comes on a daily weekly basis that they already know the words that God gives me I'm only a messenger people I'm only a messenger amen and I thank God that this book does bring correction. If you truly believe in the Word of God, this Word will bring correction into your life. It will put you in the right direction that you may know and understand what is it that God is expecting from each and every one of us, not only for the women today, but for also for the men and for the entire body of Christ. Amen? Amen? Amen. But this morning I do want to open up with a couple of verses that I may lay down the foundation for this teaching. I just want to let you ladies know that I'm not here to condemn. I'm not here to convict. I'm not here to point my finger at no woman that's in this place. But I will give you the word of God so you can chew on some meat today. Amen. 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 So you can chew on some meat today because I'm not here to give you any similar. <laughs> Amen. So I hope you guys came ready to receive. And to hear what the Spirit of God has to say on this special day for the women of God. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. So I'm going to open up in this with these verses here. And I want to thank Sister Julie for uh, making the bulletins today. I don't know where she's at. She's probably with the children. Amen. And I want to thank the Ministry of Helps for stepping in week after week after week and taking their turn and doing what they do on a weekly basis here. Amen. <coughs> like I said before, and I'll say it again, we need more help in the children's ministry, and Brother Alfred needs more help with men. I need the men to step up. If you've got any backbone, step up. It's time to step up, men of God. Amen. 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 If you have a backbone. <laughs> Amen. But this morning, I do want to share a couple of things in the book of Timothy chapter 3 starting in verse 11 it says this hold on I'll get there you guys amen he says likewise their wives must be reverent not slanderers temperate and faithful in all things amen then in the book of Titus again the young preacher begins to speak to the women of God. Amen. It says, the older women, and not necessarily is he talking about in age. He's talking about women that have been walking with the Lord for years. Okay? That the older women, likewise, that they be reverent in behavior, not slanderers, not given to a, too much wine and teachers of good things that they would admonish the young women to love their husbands and to love their children to be discreet chastising homemakers good obedient to their own husbands that the word of God may not be blasphemed amen, amen. and this is what the word of the Lord has to say to each and every woman that is here this morning. Amen. 
whether you're married, single, divorced, waiting for your Boaz to come in, you want a Boaz, start acting like Ruth. Amen. But as I was reading this, this one word came out to me. And the Lord began to speak to me that I may share this with all the women in here. Amen. And that word was discreet. And the word discreet means this. So it means to be careful in one speech. The word of the Lord says to be quick to listen and slow to speak. So you have to know and understand that the words that are coming out of your mouth are truly coming out of your heart. Do you believe that? Because the word of the Lord says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. I'm speaking truth in love this morning. Amen? So discreet means to be careful in one's speech or even your actions, especially in order to avoid causing an offense or to gain an advantage in one area or another. Amen? In other words, women of God, you need to know when to zip it up and throw it away. I'm speaking truth here this morning because I want women of God to become women of God in order for you to know and understand that God can bless you over and above. Amen? But there are some women in the body of Christ that want to do their own thing. They want to rule the house, especially when the husband is the head of the house and he is serving the Lord and he is doing the best that he can do. But the women always want to wear the pants. I can tell you something right now. My pants don't fit Pastor Marcia. <laughs> Amen. And she can't walk in these pants as much as she would like to. Amen. But I thank God for my wife. Amen. I thank God that God has brought us together many years ago. She was 15. I was 16. She was a freshman. I was a sophomore in high school. We didn't go to the same school. But when she found out who I was, <laughs> I'll leave it at that, brother. Amen. 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 But I, do, I wanted to share all that with all of you ladies that are in here because it is so important for each lady that claims to be a woman of God that they should know how to learn how to walk and talk in the ways of God. Amen. 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 So I want every woman that is in here right now to turn around and tell somebody, I am not a mistake. See, because it was Eve that made the mistake. Amen? Amen? We're going to have a good time here tonight, this morning, ladies. Amen? So what is a mother? And I've got so many notes that God gave me. And some are in blue, some are in green, and some are in red. Amen? And this is the way the Lord was speaking to me. So the title of this message is, if you saw the bulletins, it's plain and simple. I am a woman of, with three question marks. You have to fill in that line, ladies. You have to know who you are as a woman of. It's okay. As long as it's not the Lord calling right now. <laughs> Amen. So what is a woman? Amen. Or what is a mother? A mother is someone who gives birth to a child. A mother is someone who gives great care and affection with excessive degree. Amen. A mother is regarded as the creator or the founder of something that's within her. Amen. A mother is a protector. Amen. A mother is a person that you can talk to. It's like this, and from time to time, your sons and daughters will come to the father. He says, don't ask me, go ask your mother. Yeah. That's right. Why? Don't you know that a lady or a mother in that household, huh? She's like a thermostat. She's the one that sets the atmosphere in the house. Amen? Because if the mother is angry that day, guess what? Everybody's going to be angry, and everybody's going to be in trouble. And why isn't the dinner cooked? And why and why? And if she is angry, 
everybody's going to be in trouble. Do you believe that? Amen. Come on, men of God, raise your hand. Come on, this may be a little message for you too, here and there. Amen. But see, a mother is so many things in life. And a mother becomes, when she becomes a mother, she takes on the responsibilities of being a mother. As men, we don't know what those responsibilities are. We don't know what a woman is feeling inside, her emotions, her feelings, the hurt and the pain that come along about being a mother. Amen? Amen. Because sometimes mothers have more work to do than men expect. If we were to pay our mothers that stay home, she'd be making more money than I would be <laughs> on an hourly basis. I'd have to hire a, a, a cleaning lady. I'd have to hire a cook. I have to hire a babysitter. And she does it all in one. And for some reason or another, they never complain because it's their home too. It's their children. It's their sons and their daughters. Why? Because these are the responsibilities that God has given a mother. And she is so accountable to fulfilling that calling as a mother. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. I hope the women of God are awake in this place. If not, I'm going to wake you up here in a little bit. <laughs> Amen? But see, sometimes mothers become mothers by choice. And sometimes mothers don't become mothers by choice. Because sometimes mothers become mothers by adoption. I know that. My wife knows that. Because we adopted and we brought in our youngest brother. My youngest brother when he was 7 years old. I was only 22 years old. I was already taking care of a 7 year old. And I already had my, what, my first son. Amen. Then we brought in our, our my, my sister. She was 15 and she gave us hell, people. <laughs> but you know what? This lady right here brought correction into that young lady's life. Amen. Amen. So see, I know what it means. I know what it means to when you bring in sons and daughters that are don't really belong to you. We know that. And there's probably other people in here that have probably experienced that. Amen. But no matter how, no matter how, no matter how you have been chosen to be a mother, you've been chosen by God. Amen. Because God doesn't make mistakes. This is why I told you ladies, turn around and tell somebody, I am not a mistake. Come on, that's great. Come on say it again, ladies. I am not a mistake. Because you're not a mistake. Because God does not make mistakes. Amen. The word of the Lord says that he knew Jeremiah while he was in his mother's womb. What makes you think that God didn't know when you were in your mother's womb. Yeah. Amen. If you have a mother and she's alive right now and she's not here, call her up. And maybe you have some odds. Maybe you have some offenses. Maybe you went through some issues with your mother. It doesn't matter because as a believer, as a believing woman of God, the word of the Lord says that you're supposed to honor your mother and your father. That you may live a long and prosperous life, Amen. people. Amen. That you may live a long and prosperous <laughs> life. I wish to God my mother was alive right now. I wish to God that I could call her up and tell her how much I love her and how much I miss her. But I can't. But if she would have seen me now and where I'm at and where God has brought me to, she would have been so proud of me. Of what God has done in my life. Amen. Because she died in a terrible death. It was very, very terrible. And I don't want to get into that. Because I may not finish the message here today. Amen. Amen. But this morning I do want to go back over here and read a couple of things. The word of the Lord says that in this Bible, the New King Living James, and this Bible that God has given us, He has given us direction and instructions in order for us to continue to live a godly life. Amen. The word of the Lord says that there's over 140 women that are mentioned in this book. But there's not one woman that wrote a chapter or a verse in this book. Amen. Has nothing to do because you're a woman. That's just the way God ordained it and ordered it. Amen. 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 So see, a woman has been described as a helpmate. Amen. So I'm going to give you a couple of verses. Then I'm going to go into the meat of the word to hear this morning. The woman is the crown of her husband, Proverbs 12 and 4. Amen. 
Proverbs 18.22, it says that she is a good thing. Amen? Amen. In 1 Peter 3 and 7, it says that she is the weaker vessel. Not spiritually, but physically. Amen? Let's get that straight, man of God. Amen? The word of the Lord says that she has become our companion. I want to, and the Lord took me to this because I really want to share this with all the men that are in here concerning that woman that is sitting next to you and it's found in the book of Malachi and the Lord told, took me to this and I began to read this and see in the entire book of Malachi God is speaking to the fivefold ministry God is speaking to the priests and to the pastors and to the bishops and to the deacons and everyone that stands behind the pulpit Amen but let me read this to all of you so that you may know and understand this. Yet you say, he says, look, and this Malachi chapter 2, starting in verse 13, it says this, look, and this is the second thing that you do. You cover the altar of the Lord with tears and with weeping and crying so he does not regard the offering anymore. He's talking to the man. He's talking to the pastors. He says, nor receive it with goodwill from your hands. Yet you say, for what reason? You know, for what reason? You know that sometimes we're always looking for a reason, huh? To justify our actions. Amen? Yet you say, for what reason? He says, because, because there is always a cause with God. He says, because the Lord has been witness. Don't you know that anything and everything that we do here on this earth... God is a witness of what we're saying and what we're doing. Do you believe that? Yes. I'm only reading what the Word of God has to say. Because at one day, one of these days, people, we are all going to be accountable for every action, every word, every deed, everything that we did here on this earth. We're going to stand before the Lord one day, people. And God is a witness to that. Amen? Amen. He says, because the Lord has been witnesses says, between you and the wife of your youth. Amen? Amen. With whom you have dealt, what? Treacherously. Why? Because these men, these priests, these holy men were doing things behind closed doors with other women in the temple. And it's not supposed to be that way. Well, guess what? Nothing has changed in the body of Christ. Do you know how many men and women are committing adultery behind this pulpit? Not this pulpit. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Week after week after week, month after month, year after year, men and women of God, they can stand here and open up this book and preach the word of God to the people, and yet behind closed doors, they're committing adultery. They're committing fortification. They're on drugs. They're doing anything and everything to satisfy their flesh because they just can't control themselves. And one of the fruits of the Spirit is says to do what? To have self-control. Amen? But too many men, too many men, especially the men. My God, people, I don't know. Look, I've been serving the Lord for 36 years. And I fear God. I fear God with reverence to respect His Word. I know who God is. I know what God has done in my life. And I'm not about to, I'm not about to bring or, or to whatever you want to call it, to go against the Lord, to defile myself before the Lord, huh? to defile this pulpit, to defile this book. Can you imagine what I would feel like if I was to open this book next Sunday and I committed adultery this week? Huh? Do you actually believe that the Holy Spirit would start talking to me and through me so you guys could get ministered to? Oh, can I say it this way? Oh, hell no! Amen. That's right. Because I am not about I am not about to do something stupid and ignorant to ruin my walk with God. Amen. Because I am going to have to answer my Lord on the day that I die, I'm going to be facing the Lord face to face. And if I can't start practicing those things here on earth, what's going to happen to me when I die? What's going to happen to you guys when you die and you choose to do what you want to do? I'm speaking the truth in love this morning, people. Because I don't want nobody to go to hell. Amen? 
Amen. Amen. He says, because the Lord has been witness between you and the wife of your youth with whom you have dealt treacherously, yet she is your companion and your wife by covenant. Do you know what that means, men and women of God, huh? To break the covenant that you have made before the Lord? No, to break those vows and those words that you spoke to each other on the day that you said, I do, that I would, huh? Protect you, defend you, huh? For better or for worse, for sickness and in health, for to, for richer, for poor, till death do you part, till little Sally comes around, or little Johnny comes around, because you just had a fight with your husband and your wife, and you just can't deal with this no more. It sure is quiet in this Holy Ghost church this morning. <laughs> I'm speaking truth, people, because I want yeah. people to get it right. Yeah. I want people to get their marriages so blessed over and beyond, people. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. people. Yeah. You have no clue. You have no clue of what God can do with two people that walk together in agreement. Yeah. You have no clue of what God can do. The blessings that yeah. God can bless you with. Right. No, the blessings that God can bless you with. Look, I'm not here just talking about that God wants to uh, the bless. It's more than every time, every time people think about money. It's not about money, people. That's right. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's about being right with God and being right with each other. And, and, and this is the thing that I always tell couples. And look, there's three things that you have to invest in your lives. You have to learn how to trust one another. You have to learn how to love one another. And you have to learn how to communicate with one another. Now, if you take those three principles and apply them to your life on a daily basis, guess what? You're going to have a happy marriage. You may have some road bumps along the way. You may have some chuck holes. And you may have some detours. It's okay, people, as long as you're together and as long as you're in agreement. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. I knew God was going to take me there. Amen. He says, because the Lord has been witness between you and the wife of your youth with whom you have dealt treacherously. Yet she is your companion and she is your wife by covenant. But he did not make them one. But did he not make them one? Did you not, come be did you not become one when you said I do? Yes. Amen. 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 Yes. You did. Amen. Having a remnant of the spirit. And why one? Oh my God, people, this is so neat. This is, I'm so glad that God put this in here. Amen. He says, having a remnant of the Spirit, and why one with a question mark? Because he is seeking godly offspring. No, he is seeking godly offspring. Don't you know that child that's in your womb, that when two people are in agreement, when two people are serving God, what makes you think that that child is not going to come out the way God wants him to be? Amen? Amen? That's why the word of the Lord says, Train up a child in the way that they should go, and they will not depart. Amen? Amen. It's like my wife was saying. You know what? There's too many lazy men, too many lazy women that are not willing to deal with what they need to Amen. deal with and do it now because we're going to stand before the Lord one day, and the Lord is going to ask you, why? And you may not even have an answer for that. You may not have an answer for that. Amen? Amen. You still love me? Amen. I'm only preaching what the Word of God is saying here. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. So be careful of what you're saying and doing. Be careful how you're still raising your sons and your daughters. Amen? For he is seeking godly offspring. He says, therefore, take heed to your spirit. And let none deal treacherously with the wife of his youth. Amen. It's pretty sad when men and women of God are still arguing. It's pretty sad when men and women of God are still cussing and cursing at one another. That is so bad. I have never cussed at my wife. Don't plan to. Why should I? The only reason that you cuss people because it's a lack of your vocabulary. You just don't know what to say anymore. So here comes out your flesh. Your flesh comes out. 
Now you're dealing with somebody that you're supposed to be your companion, it's supposed to be your wife, the covenant and everything else that you said before the Lord, and here you are treating each other this way? It's not supposed to be that way. We're Christians, and we're supposed to be walking in love, in the love of God. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 Well, that was just my introduction, and I'm not going into a two-part series. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Amen? Amen. So see, and, and, and a woman is also supposed, in 1 Peter 3 and 5, it says that the woman is supposed to submit to her husband. Amen? And the word of the Lord says that she's supposed to learn from her husband. How many men of God in here right now are teaching their wives of what the word of God says? I'm going to raise my hand. I'm teaching my wife. You know what the word of God says to the men? That we're supposed to wash our Wash her with the word. Wash her with her. Soak her up, man. That's why they call me SpongeBob. Because <laughs> I get the word, I get my sponge, I come over here, I soak it in here, then I just wring her all over. But right, you guys don't get that on the way home too. Amen. I don't know where that came from, Lord. Amen. But praise God, amen. Because your wife is supposed to learn from her husband. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 31 says that she is supposed to be trustworthy. Yes. Amen. Proverbs 5.15 says that she's supposed to be exclusively satisfying her husband. Amen. When there is a mutual agreement. And the woman of God is supposed to be undefiled. We sure is quiet in here, man. <laughs> Are we in a Holy Ghost church this morning? Because I don't hear any amens coming from the women or the men in here. And all the men should be saying, Amen, Pastor Bob. Amen, Pastor Bob. Amen, Pastor Bob. But nobody's saying nothing. Are you guys awake on this Mother's Day? Huh? Amen? But this morning, I want to just give you a description of some of the women that God has placed in my heart to share with all of you very familiar names that I'm going to be speaking about. Amen. So here we go to the first one. We know who Eve was, right? The mother of all living, the disobedient one. Amen. When God told her not to, she did. She was disobedient not only to her husband, but to her her God. Amen. See, because she, you never know, women of God, how the enemy is going to come in. The enemy came in as a snake, and the snake is slick. And a snake can come in through anything. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen? So women of God, you have to have enough discernment to know and understand the difference between right and wrong, good and evil. Right. You have to know when to say yes. You have to know when to say no. And don't be afraid to say no. But be careful when you say yes. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. So that was Eve. Then we got Sarah. Oh yeah, Sarah was obedient. And she even, the word of God says that she even called uh, Abraham Lord. Amen. Amen. But also, Sarah lied. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And who did she lie to? To the angels of God. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine standing before an angel of God and you know that you know that it's God and there you are denying just what you said? Huh? Mm -hmm. You know how many people in the body of Christ lie? Don't raise your hands. <laughs> I'm not asking nobody to raise your hands. That's between you and God. Let the Holy Spirit convict you if there's any conviction in your heart. Amen? We're not supposed to be lying to each other, people. Amen? We're not. I mean, wh what do you get from lying? What are you doing? Exaggerating the truth? Or is it a white lie? Or is it a Mexican lie? <laughs> huh? Mentirosos? Huh? Or is it a black lie? What kind of a lie do you want to lie about? Amen? Did you lie your taxes this year? <laughs> God knows. Right. And you want to know why you're not getting a return? Come on. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Then you have Lot's wife. Here comes the same angels that spoke to Sarah. Amen? And what did the angels of God say? Huh? Whatever you do, don't look back. 
Do you know how many women have more many thoughts and memories that are locked up in their hearts 